Hello everyone, it's Wilson here. Today let's continue to talk about solving separable equations. As you can see here in this equation, it has four terms. So how do we make it in the form of a separable equation? We can actually try to factor this by grouping. Okay, so first we are going to start by writing the x squared y and then plus y. So we are going to group the first two terms together. So it's going to look like this. And then what happened is that for the last two turns, the third turn and the fourth turn, we also need to group them together. So we have plus and then negative three x squared minus three. So now we are going to just group them together. Okay, so what happened is that we are going to factor out the greatest common factor from each group and see what happens. So next we are going to have factor the y. So we are getting x squared plus one inside the parentheses. And then here for the second group, we can factor out negative three. So we can get minus three and then x squared. Now for this second turn here, because we already pull out the negative three, so we are left with positive one. Okay, so make sure that you pay attention to the sign. And so we get plus one. Okay, as you can see here, there are two turns now. And then for the two turns, they both have the same factor x squared plus one. So we can now do one more factoring, factor out the x squared plus one. And we are getting x squared plus one and then times y minus three. And as you can see that the first term will give us the y and then the second term will give us the negative three. So we have that. And so as you can see that this is actually in the form of a separable equation because this expression right here, the first factor is only involving the x and then the second factor is only involving the y. Okay, so now let's actually rewrite the equation. Let's actually rewrite the equation as dy over dx and then we can start solving this equation. So the way of separating the variables would actually be really simple. So all we need to do is to get the y minus three to the side. And to get the y minus three to the left hand side of the equation, we need to divide by it, right? So in order for us to divide by this, we need to make sure that it's non-zero. So one thing that we need to keep in mind is that when we have the equation in this form, this y minus three here tells us that there is a solution, there is a constant solution so there is a constant solution for this differential equation, which is y equals three. Okay, so you can actually verify that easily, but we are not going to spend the time doing that here. What we're gonna do right now is that we are going to just make the assumption that y is not three anymore, and then we can divide. What happens is that we are just going to, okay, so say that the next step, so making the assumption that y is not equal to three, then what do we get here? We are going to get one over y minus three. So as you can see that we're not dividing by zero anymore. So now we are going to just get the dy here. And that's equal to x squared plus one. And then don't forget the parentheses. And then see that there was a dx right here. We can multiply, treat it as a differential, multiply by dx on both sides. So we are going to get the dx on this side. And, so, and then so now what we are going to do is that we can integrate both sides, right? So we can integrate both sides of this equation. And then what do we get here? Integrating both sides of this equation, we are going to, uh, on the left-hand side, we are going to get the ln of absolute value, the y minus three. And then on the right-hand side of the equation, we can integrate this one. This one is easy to integrate. This is a polynomial, right? So we simply just use the power rule. So we are going to get one over three x cubed plus and then x and then plus a k. Okay, k is constant. And then so now what happened is that uh, basically we finished solving the equation, but usually we try to isolate the y if it's possible. Okay, so in fact, it's possible here. So we can exponentiate both sides here because of the ln function. So we are going to get the e here, e here, and then that would actually turn our equation into absolute value of the y minus three equals Okay, as you can see that you can think of the e and the ln, they cancel each other out. So we get the absolute value of y minus three. Okay, and so because we're composing the inverse functions together. So here we are going to get what? We are going to get e to the one over three x cubed plus x plus k. Now there was one thing that I want to point out here if we want to simplify this expression is that we can actually, we actually should be recalling. Okay, so let's recall. 
law of exponent is that when we have e to the a plus b, we can actually write it as e to the a times e to the b. So we can actually separate as e to the k out as we are using this rule of exponent. Okay, so the left hand side is still absolute value of y minus 3 equals, and then now separate this, we get e to the 1 over 3x cubed plus x times e to the k. And then we can actually move that to the front. Let's keep going. Okay, so we can also remove the absolute values. So what we can do is that we can actually write y minus 3 is equal to plus or minus e to the k. So see that I'm moving e to the k to the front. And then we have e to the 1 over 3x cubed plus x. And then if you want, Okay, we can actually write this as c here. And so we have the equation as y minus 3 equals, and then there is a c here, we have e to the 1 over 3x cubed plus x. And then all we need to do is to isolate the y by adding the 3 to both sides of the equation. So we are going to get y equals c times e to the 1 over 3x cubed plus x, and then plus 3. Now remember that the plus 3, it should not be in the exponent, right? So write it bigger so that it's not being uh, treated as an exponent. So that's our solution. And as you can see here, remember that we mentioned that there was a constant solution, y equals 3 here. And that solution is actually uh, not the same one as this one. I mean, you cannot really get the 3 from this solution here because this is non-zero. So only when this is zero, then you can get y equals three, but that's not the case here, as you can see, okay? So just one thing to keep in mind that sometimes the equation can have a constant solution. Um, you need to pay attention to that so that you're not missing it because when we assume that y is not three, we can divide by this factor. And so that's what makes this constant solution disappear from the solution that we are getting here. Okay, so that's it for this problem. Thank you for watching. I will see you next time.